What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Bourbon and Bullshit, the podcast where everyone's welcome to the table to share a good conversation, a great drink, and even better company, and a little bit of BS. So grab a seat, pour up something neat, and welcome to the show. What's going on, everyone? Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the brand new intro. Uh, thankfully, we finally got our hands on something more consistent, something you know that I got hooked up with. I was blessed by my homie Tony, but hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Smooth beats. It was really fun to get and work with. So that's it. That's who we are now. That's going to be the music going forward. You're not going to hear any of those premium beat.com or any of those things from before. But welcome into Bourbon and Bullshit. Show we're gonna have a little, a lot of fun today. Today is a special day, guys. So tonight we brought on the infamous, the 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 world famous Aurora Fable, aka the Sugar Mama of the show. She is our number one sponsor, one of our greatest proprietors, one of the people that has been supportive since day one. I could not wait to get her in here and bring her gothic energy for the perfect month to have her here, by the way. So since it's October and spooky season, I want to bring in the infamous Aurora Fable. Aurora, what's going on? Hello, hello. Wow, I've never been called a sugar mama before. I kind of like it. You paid me and I entertain you. That feels a lot like you're my sugar mama. Actually, yes, I, I like that. I paid you. And now you do things. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, whatever's legal in, in Vegas is fine. But here, we have to have paperwork and shit. But Aurora, um, tell us, man, how, how's everything going for you, man? I know that you've had a busy, busy season. And um, I'm really happy that we got to sneak you in before it really gets hectic for you. Um, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, Aurora Fable uh, is from Midnight Cabaret, the burlesque troupe. Yes, Midnight Fables Cabaret is my burlesque troupe. Um, and yes, you did catch me at a great time. Spooky season seven days in. Granted, Halloween is always in my heart. It is not a holiday. It is a lifestyle. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. That's you, fair. You've been to my house, so you know. Um, it, it's actually going well. Uh, we're Are you the household? Good. If you had the opportunity, you would use the giant skeleton, just put Santa outfits on him or turkey on him, depending on the season? Absolutely. I have 17 and a half foot ceilings. He will be in my living room Bro. all year round. It's going to be great. <laughs> Just, Let's, you know, wake up in the morning. Hey, do you want a cup of coffee? <laughs> How you been? You, you're like, gonna, what's going on? You're going to caffeinate the giant skeleton? <laughs> like, how's that? Why? You have to give offerings every day. Oh, like, come on. He's is, the protector of the house. There's going to be some witchcraft conversation later for sure. <laughs> uh, so Aurora and I, for anyone who's tuning in for the first time, what we typically do here at Bourbon and Bullshit, we start with a drink of the day. So because... As a, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say it as um, you know, an offering to our patron uh, Aurora. We made a we went ahead and made a drink called the Lady in Shadows. If you follow us on socials, um, Bourbon underscore and BS, well, Bourbon underscore and underscore BS on Instagram, you'll be able to see what the drink of the day is. Lady in Shadows is a 1.5 ounce bourbon cocktail with pear brandy to offset some of that sweetness. But of course, we had to make it with activated charcoal for our patron saint here <laughs> it was it came out pretty good um or what do you think of the cocktail after we did some tweaks i really do enjoy it um i like the the acidic uh lemon the mm -hmm. lemon zest and the lemon peel you put into mm -hmm. it it really brightened up the flavor the fact that it's black and gothic and lovely makes my day so i will definitely be enjoying this more <laughs> often um you sliced a really thin pear slice in to put it, so it was a wonderful experience, not only to drink it, but also to smell, taste, everything else. Awesome. I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed it. Hopefully, if you guys want to make this, activated charcoal is not needed, but I mean, don't, don't half-ass anything here. We don't half-ass anything at Bourbon and Bullshit. We whole-ass everything. Uh, no, we can't. So... 
please, if you guys make that cocktail, share, tag us, let us know how it turned out. If you liked it, my tongue is black now. And if you are, an, <laughs> it's a random thing. A uh, couple of things you need to know about activated charcoal is if you are on any medications, make sure that it doesn't get detoxified because that is the purpose in activated charcoal. That and to look like uh, emo is not a face and this is who I am, mom. Don't judge me. Um, so one of the questions we like to ask everyone when they come on to Bourbon and Bullshit, similar to in the roots of where we started from Full Frontal Nerdy Show, we kind of wanted to get to know Aurora, what's keeping you busy, what's keeping you occupied, what do you sip on? So what have you been watching, reading, and doing? So, I mean, other than, of course, the many things in the burlesque troops, um, I really am someone that likes to do horror films every single day. During the month of October. You're speaking my language. I love it. I will go from anywhere from the 1920s all the way from Nosferatu to today. And lately, it's been been a kind of crazy ride. So Nosferatu, you're talking about the original. Yes. The old, old black and white. Yeah, 1922. We're yeah. going to throw it all the way back there. Is that what you like? Is, are you like particular to that? Do you like the old school Hollywood films? like the? Yes. Oh, yes. Creature of the Black Lagoon and all you that. You got to think about it. Like they really went in not only to think about, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to mm. record this? But also they did it all in the daytime outside. Oh, yeah. Because remember, they didn't have lights back then. They didn't have lighting like, like we did. They didn't now. have lighting back then. I mean, come on. Like 4K, mm. we're throwing back and everything. And they wrong? don't do that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they really went in okay. about the costuming, the effects. Like, oh, I love it. So if so, Nosferatu, mm-hmm. Creature of the Black Lagoon, the original Frankenstein, Dracula, of all of them, which one was like it? Which one was like? Mm. Oh, that's hard. Um, that's really hard. Well, here's the thing. You said Dracula, and immediately I have to think of Bram Stoker's Dracula mm-hmm. um, with Keanu Reeves in it. And oh, oh my God, that, I, I remember that. One. Yes, <laughs> I forgot he did that. Everyone remembers that because either you're on on one side of the fence. Uh, where you hate it, you think it's the worst film in the entire world, and then you have the other side of the fence where we freaking love it. I will watch mm. it every single year religiously mm. because I have to watch just the longing in Keanu Reeves' eyes and like the way that he's like, I, I've traveled oceans of time to find you. Like, it, come on, it's a classic. Oh, look, Keanu could do no wrong with me. <laughs> Keanu could literally just stare at the screen for 35 minutes. I'm probably going to pay to go watch it. I won't lie to you. There's there's something about Keanu, and I know that at some point he had the whole. Sorry for the sound. Um, he had a the whole revelation where everyone rediscovered Keanu after John Wick. But I've been a fan of Keanu for a very fucking long time. He Agreed. could he could do barely any wrong. <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's not just Matrix with him. Yeah, like, exactly. It's not just the Matrix. Bill and like Ted. You, what's that? Oh gosh. Point Break. Point oh Point Speed. Break. Like, this man has been great. Uh, and, Why did and, we forget about him? <laughs> like, what happened? Are, are we it, trash people? We forgot about him and Brendan Fraser. What happened with us? It, it's to a point where they do something that we, as a community, it's the cancel culture. Okay? Mm. It's the pre-cancel culture. Mm. Mm. All right? And that mm. that just, that sucks. Like, let's not cancel people unless they do some terrible shit. Uh, Can I curse? Yeah, you could. Okay, uh, thank uh, God. Fuck, you could always fucking curse here. What? <laughs> If anyone is uh, listening in here, this is uh, not a child-friendly show. Um, fuck your kids. Uh, <laughs> they should not be listening we're, to a show called Bourbon and Bullshit. I mean, we're going to be talking about burlesque and taking clothes off. So, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, children love running around fucking, woo! <laughs> By the way, which is always funny and random. They're like, always wanting to be naked yeah, all like, the time. And, and I get it, kid, but bro, we're at the mall. <laughs> like, like, relax. Gee, mm. they need to be free. I, I don't Let them be free. It's fine. Okay, free, so just, free the... Oh, I don't want to no. think about its kids. I exactly why I stopped it. No. So mm-hmm. aside from... We're not going to go down that road. So, see, mm, cancel culture. Cancel culture. You're going to get canceled. Uh, canceled. Welcome to the last episode of Burning the Bullshit, <laughs> where we have been officially canceled after our patron has <laughs> crossed the fucking line. The sugar mama fucked sugar up. Ma- okay. Sh- sugar sorry. mama fucked up, y'all. Fucking Johnny couldn't fuck up this bad. Listen, um... So aside, no. from, aside from the horror movies and stuff like that, have you been into any books, podcasts, or any audio things going on? Yes. Or okay, so oh. just a seamless plug, I am a woman, and I love... <laughs> Holy I am a, shit. I am a lady. Okay? Right, lady. I'm a, I am a lady, so I read my porn, okay? Okay. okay I am a lady. Okay. So a lot of smut <laughs> books, all right? <laughs> I read my porn. Respect I, I, me, then. I read my porn. Um, no, there's a lot of like books that I'll, like, I'll read and mm. I'll reread, especially during the holiday season. Um, and when I say holiday season, I'm not talking about the stuff that happens in fucking December. I'm talking about right now. Mm. Um, this, this is the, my holiday. This is my holiday. Mm. Um, 
it, it's always Anne Rice in my heart. The moment October 1st happens, I start reading um, Interview of the Vampire. Yeah. And I always finish the night before Halloween. And I just love reading that and rereading it. Um, so that's more of like a, you know, a PG book that I can throw out there. A pure curiosity. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm an avid reader and I feel like every time I go through something, I pick on something that I didn't pick up before. Yeah. You've reread this so often. Is there anything new still? Yes. Ah, you see, that's good. Yes. That's how you can tell she's a good author. It's, I agree completely. There mm-hmm. are authors out there where I can't reread their books. Mm. I try so hard. And we're we talking about Twilight. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've read Twilight once and only once. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Um, actually, similar to that, uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Okay. I know I might get canceled. No, okay. t- Sarah tell me J- about this. Sarah J. Mass is absolutely insane. Okay. Um, she has created such an amazing. Um, I'm not familiar universe. with the series. Break this out over. Okay, so oh, yeah. again, we're talking about face smut. All right, it's a little bit on okay. the smutty side. All okay, right? okay. Especially their last book is so smutty. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyways. So, a course. Did you say face smut? Face smut. Like fairies. Fairies. Okay, I just want to be okay. true. Pointy yeah. ears. All okay. Right. Statuesque. All right. All right. Let's, no, I'm out of it. Just want to make sure I heard we're just right. Gonna, we're going we're gonna to vibe for it right go. now. Let's go. So, <laughs> we're here. She's, <laughs> it's to a point where it is a cult following for mm. A Court of Thorns, Thorns and Roses. Mm. There is a talk right now of it having a TV series, and girls are going feral for this. Feral, like. Fifty Shades of Grey feral throwing your underwear oh, at that okay. dude well, from okay. Jack Skeller. We're gonna we're gonna say this straight up. I just okay. want to know which kind of feral because F- Fifty not, Shades of Grey can get fucked. Okay, let's just I'm saying let's fa- just throw that right out. Not the books. I'm saying how people responded when that movie was getting made. <laughs> like, um, I don't. I honestly don't. Are people know. getting that crazy? Are people like when they're they, they're really excited for it? Have they announced any possible actors and actresses? Because not yet. Cause not yet. Their there's, lives are about to suck, right? Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. It's to a point where there's now in multiple cities across the world mm. they will actually put on balls in honor of this book series you're telling me mm-hmm. people are paying good money mm-hmm. to play make-believe mm-hmm. and dance parties mm-hmm. that doesn't sound abnormal dress as fairies that it's doesn't great. sound abnormal it's great. we're in orlando this what is the amazing. Fuck? that's what people do fucking every day <laughs> but that's that's the beauty of this this um book series yeah and she has created such an amazing um realm mm. that not only is it action-packed it's it's fey lore it's it's really getting the nitty gritty. Yes, there's a little bit of smut side and a little like love. We story started with side. smut. You br- they brought you in with smuts. It's all smut about side. the smut. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but this series, like you take the smut away, even though it, eh, wah, wah, it's still a good series. Mm. Um, and I can't reread it. Really? I, I can't because I thought you were going to tell me the opposite. No, like it's it's to a point where I I read through it twice mm. and. The second time, I knew what was coming. I was excited. I was engaged. I want to. Ke- I wanted to keep reading, and I can read a book pretty quickly. Yeah. And it's. It got to a point where I was going through it, so I know what was happening next, even though I already knew what was going to happen next. Yeah. And she just announced that there's going to be another book in the series. Mm. We're all going crazy. Um. I might reread Are you like it on for a the forum third- now or something. What's going? <laughs> oh no! There's Facebook groups. There's God Instagrams. There's. A- Honey, really? I get it. Of course, I get it. Of course there's not, it. Of course so we're all super excited. Okay. Um, but it's it's that kind of feeling where the fa- I can reread Anne Rice multiple times okay. over. And Anne Rice is that step. That, that's it. the that's the fucking barometer. It's this it. is it for success and good book writing. All right. There's another one that I've been reading, and they're about to come out with a third book. And uh, my husband, Shinorbi, he laughs at me every time that I re-pick up the book in preparation for this third book. Okay, what is it? And I always do the thing of... I have to reread the series before the new book comes out so that mm. I can re- like recall what was happening, like refresh my mind. Like this series bonded by thorns. It's having the third book released in December. Mm. I've reread it five times now. For what? It's so good. Uh, look, it's I, so good. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm not here to judge. I'm not saying I'm going to judge you. I'm just saying other people might judge you. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> like, please judge me. And if you would like to join uh, a book club, please message me at Aurora Fable on Instagram. I need friends. <laughs> I need friends that are willing to read the same book five times in a row. But it looks... <laughs> and then talk about it constantly. I mean, look, I have I have fallen in love with 
book series. I'm a, obviously we, I came from a nerd podcast for a reason, right? It wasn't fucking for fun and shits and giggles. I wasn't faking it. I read a fuck ton and I've joined groups and all that. And I feel like there's sometimes in those groups, like it diminishes the value of the book because there's some toxic fans. We talked about it previously. Toxic mm-hmm. fans of shit or people who are upset with how the author wrote some things like that's not the character's nature. The man made the character, bro. You don't know the character. Relax, chill. Uh, it's like, oh, that's poor writing. Then write one, write something. It, it is the feeling of that because yeah. I'm in a Facebook group with um, and a TikTok group. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! TikTok, okay. TikTok makes groups now. Okay, so well, <laughs> it's it's a following, so it's not really a group, okay. it's a following. So uh. we all know TikTok. We have a love hate relationship for TikTok. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's a thing called Book Talk. Okay, mm-hmm. now Book Talk, B O O K T O K. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Book Talk always has that point where they're like this book this is it we all have to read this everyone and the book will sell out if it's on book talk can someone, it will sell out can someone go to pod talk and put me on there please <laughs> there might you. be a pod talk <laughs> please and thank you <laughs> hi this pod podcast called bourbon and bullshit you definitely need to listen to it we talk about smut yay we talk about the face smut not regular smut face smut <laughs> we need the pointy ears oh my god so yeah <laughs> Sorry, that threw me off. We need to point ears. Um, so we read these books over and over. You do this during the holidays and mm-hmm. um, our holiday. But to your, the point that I was making earlier about the books I fall in love with, um, I will go into, I'll use an easy example, Stephen King's The Dark Tower series. Oh, yes, I fucking, absolutely. I love every single book. I will absolutely. read it through and through. And there are still motherfuckers arguing about the third book. We're like at eight. Like, why are we there still? Like, move on. They're like, I can't believe that we still haven't gotten... Shut up. Relax. Like, just fucking read the books. Enjoy the books. Fucking... We're here to celebrate something. We obviously are all in this group because we love something. If you want to be in a group to shit on something, this is not the group. At least me. That's not who I am or who I've ever been, so... But, so I get it. Um, All right. Well, sounds like you're getting fully prepared for uh, Spooky Season. On the topic of Anne Rice, though, have you ever checked out the show, the... uh, I think it's the AMC iteration of Interview with the Vampire. Absolutely. With uh, Grey Worm. I don't, I feel disrespectful to the actor. I feel Not so Grey disrespectful. Grey Worm. Oh, Because I no. know him as a Grey Worm from Game of Thrones. I, he is such a brilliant, really underrated actor. The shows go fantastic. Did you enjoy that one? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like, look, I have I have a love affair with yeah. um, Tom Cruise and as Lestat, even though there's some points in that movie where I'm like, but why Tom Cruise? But why? And Brad Pitt. You know, absolutely. You know that Brad Pitt hated that movie. Yes. He wanted out of that movie yes. and then he realized how much he would owe to leave the movie. So he stayed on. It's not a lot of people know that, but I, I don't know if you've watched um, What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, yeah. 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 So they make fun of that when the oh, Vampire yeah. Council happens. And they're like, oh, we want to they want to put it behind. They don't they don't want to they don't want to bring this up. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. a reason. Yeah. Brad Pitt would, even though, which is, we talked about a whale before, but he, him and Tom Cruise, imagining trying to put together that ensemble of actors would fucking cost you a million, millions of dollars or another Ocean's Eleven movie. Um, Because they always somehow put that together in Expendables nowadays. Uh, has hey, been, no, I like the all women uh, Oceans. It was, was it? Oceans th- it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> you know it was Let's bad. Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. They had to steal the diamond necklace. Oh, we're done. We're not doing this. This is Rihanna. We are in a place of happiness because it's Halloween right now. You do not take me down this dark path. Uh, but good. I'm glad you're getting ready for the time, and I'm glad you enjoyed the series. Um, we watched that a little bit, and it was very well done. I know it got flack um, because people who don't read the books are like, "Oh my god, all these undertones and all the sexual stuff." I was like, "Do you not know who the fuck Anne Rice is?" It's like, do you not know what vampires are? Yeah, I was like, like the difference between vampires and werewolves is vampires fuck a lot. Um, excuse me, werewolves fuck a lot too, but they, they both, kill they, they kill more than they. I was about fuck. to say, I'm like, there's a lot of fucking going on. Okay? Werewolves fuck a lot, but, there's but a lot they, of things. They, they kill a lot more. Uh, <laughs> they kill significantly more. <laughs> Um, um, I'm sorry, but vampires probably kill a lot more because they have to feed. Mm. And depending on what vampire series, you, I mean, not all vampires are glittery. And are we going to argue this sparkly. about the which is worse? Because a werewolf is just going to go. You know what? We're not. Oh yes, this no, no, not, no. So this needs to be this. this needs to be a side this, show. This will be where a, all we do is just vampires and werewolves. For anyone who wants win. to tune into the Patreon or the bonus episode part stuff, that we're going to be discussing which is Bring arguably worse. I will, oh, I will God. die on this. <laughs> I will die on this hill. Yes, uh, yes, you will. <laughs> God damn it. So. Um, I, well, that's cool. Awesome. For me, I, I have actually been enjoying, recently I enjoyed this really interesting, cool, unique horror movie called Talk to Me. 
I don't know if <gasps> you heard it. That's on my list. Oh my God. Look. I so, need to watch that. So I went into this movie. I saw the trailers. I saw this. I was like, oh, it's going to be a, a typical ghost story. Um, for anyone who hasn't heard about Talk To Me, it's an A24 film because, you know, it has to be fucking fancy and well-written and well done. Talk To Me. A24 is notorious for it. Uh, we saw that with the movie Pearl. We saw that with the movie X. We saw like they are really good when it comes to doing a well done one horror movie. One of my movie. favorites. One of my favorites. Pearl. If you haven't checked that movie out, Pearl is worth watching. I think it's Pearl. I think it's Pearl. I know X is the sequel to Pearl. Oh, uh, the prequel. The sequel to Pearl. I'm drawing a blank. No worries. I will make sure. But talk to me. Um, we'll get there. Talk to me. You're following a group of friends who discover uh, there's a internet sensation where they're watching people from their local town somewhere in Australia somewhere New Zealand um, they, that place doesn't exist that's another uh, conspiracy theory um, they discover there's a way to conjure spirits using an embalmed hand and you become hooked on it it's on a new thrill so people are posting because TikTok TikTok yeah. trends people are watching these videos of people like losing themselves in a feud state over like oh my god they're speaking in tongues and doing all this crazy stuff so they and they, they don't know, where did you get this hand? Oh, it's uh, a medium's hand that was covered in porcelain. So when you hold it on the table, light a candle, say, talk to me. A person, a, a spirit will appear in front of you. And you said, I let you in. It takes over your consciousness. And you have a time limit of 90 seconds. They've only pushed it to 90 seconds. Anything past that, if you don't blow out that candle, you have now let them live in there. Mm. And of course... How every movie fucking does it. Someone went past 90 seconds. Of course. Because you're following a girl. Who was went, it a blonde white woman? No. It was a black woman <gasps> with blonde hair. It's usually the blonde white woman that's I, just like, I'm going to be right back. She has blonde highlights. Mm. <laughs> like, but yeah. I knew it. She, um, she lost her mother. So she's still dealing with that grief, but it's been wow. two years. So one of the times that a friend of hers or a character talks to the hand, uh, I must say talk to the hand. That's funny. Um, I'm not going to ruin too much. It gets really, really good. It's well shot, well done. It's creepy as hell. It's not anyone you've ever recognized in anything, which is what A24 does mm -hmm. really well. You might kind of see someone, oh, I know that guy from that one thing. They don't do that. They want you to be lost in the movie. Well done. Check it out if you haven't. It it set the tone for what Halloween was going to be for me this year. Okay. I, I think that like we have gone so far. There's only so many saws I want to see. Oh, I know. There's only so many terror, terror, terror fires I want to see. I, I enjoy my nostalgic horror movies. Well, stay tuned to the bonus episode. We'll talk about it. Um, but there's just some shit that you didn't fucking do. You need to do something new. This was well done. Hello, you should definitely check it out. Um, uh, aside from that, I've actually been listening to... Uh, it is a really weird podcast that I found online by mistake. I was looking up horror podcasts because I... Um, if anyone who knows me, I listen to the No Sleep podcast very, very often. Love them. Dan Cummings and all of them. Uh, and this podcast that I found was The Dark Simonium. Um, This guy has a very almost scary, soothing voice. Oh, I love the podcast like that. And what he does is he curates stories from online, Reddit, whatever. People submit stories. And episodes go from two hours and 14 minutes or an hour and 12 minutes. And it is so well done. I wish I had this guy's poise when we podcast this guy, fantastic voice, but he does really cool stories and whoever's submitting this stuff should be fucking published. Let's fucking just get you out there. Ooh, okay. So if you haven't checked that out, the dark simonium, really, really worth it. And you can't keep everything dark and uh, scary. I've also been ch uh, watching. Did you know that that spinoff of the boys came out? Generation no. V. Uh, again, my husband has watched mm. this constantly, and I'm like, I can't. Uh, I ch I've tried. So, G, I've tried. I know, I know. But Generation V is actually better. Th I really, really well started. Okay. I like it so far. You follow kind of what the university looks like when they're building supers. For anyone who's never watched The Boys, it's the Prime TV's success story of a mm. uh, successful superhero where if superheroes were real, because people are dickheads in real life, and superheroes being assholes, you just gave superpowers to an ass um so you follow these people through school and how their process is like okay this guy's powers are really cool this guy's but you're following a character who had kind of a shitty story her powers are that she could use blood as weapons her okay so like blood magic All yes right, I dig that. exactly I dig exactly that. blood magic so she's had kind of a how useful are your powers because you technically have to hurt yourself to use them but that's like the best 
but you have to cut yourself to use your blood powers. So you're inflicting oh. damage, like compared to a guy who can set his whole body on fire called Golden Boy. Compared to people who could move shit. I'm with sorry. Their I'm sorry. I'm sorry. His name is Golden Boy, and yes. he can light himself on fire. He's basically the Human Torch. Oh, good God! He's a Human Torch. That's what they did. They I made love the Human these Torch names, a though. I'll be like, oh my God, Pyro. Uh, what do yeah. we do? You see, don't, we're not doing that. We're not, you, <laughs> right now, your husband is kicking. He's pumping his fist in the air. It's like, gosh. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's to a point where actually, we, we go through this every single time. I'm like, oh my God, what is his powers? His name is Waterboy. Mm. That is uh, Bobby Boucher. And you put some respect on his fucking, <laughs> you never talk about the Waterboy again. Look, look, look. He's, he's, he's an amazing Adam, person. Okay. Adam, Adam Sandler's fantastic and Bobby Boucher. That's all we're <laughs> like. That's for that. This uh, water came from the <laughs> it's blessed by Eskimo <laughs> shaman. It's cold. That's the magic. It's always cold. That the fact that you remember the whole thing, I'm very impressed. It's, trend, right now. it's trending right it now. Is. It's fucking popping but up everywhere. Here's the thing: it's like teeny boppers, and I will call them teeny boppers. Um, on are TikTok, we old? they're like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I mean, are we though? Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm, we're mm-hmm. we're 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 aged. Mm-hmm. We're aged fine wine. Okay, we are not old. We're just getting better with time. I'm just keeping up with the bourbons we drink. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> we are becoming more expensive, okay? That is really fucking accurate. It, 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 That's really fucking accurate. Oh, God. Yeah, that is right. You know, my bones are cracking. And oh, God. I mean, it, it, anyways, we're just not going to talk about that. So these, you know, teeny bobbers are like, oh, Bobby Boucher. And I'm like, you don't even know. You do you do you, do you even know? You don't even know. You do, do you know the whole thing of just like, do you want me to kill her? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god that is what we will have that sidebar conversation because i get so pissed when these like uh audio reels and stuff are trending and i was like i know what that's from do you yes. know where that's from you don't know where that's from or that meme is trending do you know what that's from you don't know what that's from all right aurora yes so let the world know more about you i want to ask you a couple questions about everything going on in the world burlesques for mm-hmm. those who do not know what the fuck burlesque is oh my- can't, because there are some people who's just like they've been chilling and it haven't even fucking turned on Twitter or anything like that ever in their life. Um, we call it Twitter now. Oh, Isn't I still like I, I don't care what that man says. I'm sorry, it's it's to a point where each time I hear it, it's called X, I'm like X, go give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Me. <laughs> or it's, he's gonna pit my ride. I don't know <laughs> what I'm logging into. I forgot about that TV Exhibit? show. <laughs> That's just back mm, here. Mm, mm, Let's go back. Okay. Anyway, so tell me, burlesque. tell me what burlesque is. Okay. And everything, tell the people what they need to know about burlesque. So if you've never been to a burlesque show, first of all, okay, let me back up. As long as you were 18 and up, where have you been? Okay. <laughs> we live in a world and a society that burlesque art form, mm-hmm. 18 and up. Okay. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye. Um, you so should not burlesque, be tuned into the show if you're not 18 and up. Go on. Also that too. Um, so burlesque is the art of the tease. Mm. So when we think of burlesque, we think of someone like Dita Von Tees. Now, if you don't know who Dita Von Tees is, one, you're living under a rock. Mm. Also, two, come to a show. Google. Google, Google, okay, mm. Google. So art of the tease is essentially taking off articles of clothing mm. while teasing or titillating. <laughs> that is the Why did you smile backwards. when you said that? Because <laughs> I love that word titillating okay because there's tits in it so titillating um the audience as you seductively remove the article of clothing um there are burlesque artists out there that will do going down from bras um going down to even more further than that we also do things that are like sideshow pieces so we can integrate things like fire swall or fire excuse me sword swallowing fire um performances angle grinding so yes we use power tools in some of yeah our i was things. like the power tool <laughs> yes the power tool it's great mm. it's fantastic is it great i feel like that's dangerous but go on i mean it is mm. but we love it oh. um dance performance like right. there's burlesque is everything so okay. burlesque in a sense is the farce of making fun of something okay so i can do nerdlesque so I can create a character from any kind of nerdy nerd fandom okay. and I can make fun of it. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun. That's why I do it. Uh, it's so much fun. So you like just making fun of things. Don't I love no. Fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So maybe just a little. So now that everyone's kind of having like an idea of what burlesque is. So your name, Aurora, and then the name of your troupe is 
troop trope troop 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 yes um trope is something else uh troop is the midnight fables cabaret yes so can you please, for anyone who's sitting there going, I wonder what the name of Bora, and if you say Borealis, I will punch you. Uh, not you, the people listening. Um, let them know what that's from. So my name is Aurora Fable. Now, as you all probably understand and know, or should know, that is not my real name. Ha! <laughs> okay, I, so. You're not a celebrity's child, My Apple. name, I mean, we're not going to go there. So Aurora Fable is my stage name, or my character name. And so... Think of it as like a gamer tag. Yes. So when you create your gamer tag, it is a persona of you that you're putting out into the universe, right? Like Batman. I am Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that like that. <laughs> great. I am a sugar mama and I'm Batman. I love it. This is exactly what we want. I, I need a utility belt. This is great. Um, so Aurora is from uh, Sleeping Beauty, which was actually my favorite Disney princess. Um, for those that do not know, her name is Aurora. Um, lovingly, people call me in the community Awoa because uh, <laughs> unless you flick your R's, it's Awoa. So Awoa. And uh, Fable is actually because um, my first uh, my first reading is with my uncle. He actually taught me how to read and um, we read Aesop's Fables. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. I did a little homage for him. So it's Fable. Um, it took me forever to come up with a name. So people are thinking, oh, my God, I want to make a persona name. It, it takes forever. I, I think it was Aurora for a long time. And then it was like Aurora Nightman. Aurora, I don't know. It was just a lot. And then leading Fable. Into, you're leading into the Batman thing, huh? That's what we're doing. I mean, I just I'm stuck in. All I can hear in the back of my head now is I am Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I think honestly, I, I'm not trying to laugh too much at that. You said Nightman, and all I thought about was always sunny in Philadelphia. Um, I got to watch that TV show that keeps popping up to me. I know I never watched it. All right, we're not going to go there. We got to get you another another side thing. So does um, that mean that Aurora lends itself directly to your troop's name, or is that kind of? Okay. So um, my original troop's name was Emerald City Cabaret, mm. um, and what that means by original is when we first started this back in 2015. We came up with the name Emerald City because we were literally watching The Wizard of Oz and trying to think of a name. And Poppy Fields did not work. So Emerald City worked better. Yeah, Poppy Fields is not a thing you want to put anywhere. I mean, I like poppies. They're yeah. pretty. Yeah, but if you put Poppy Fields, it thinks really, really like... Uh, I mean... What's the show with... Um, not Jason Stick. Uh, the, the dude from Arrested Development. What's the name of that recent show? Doesn't matter. I, I think about heroin when you think about poppy fields. Uh, <laughs> yeah, same. And we were just like, uh, sponsorship? No, never mind. Um, so that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Jason Bateman, that's, that's who it is. That's a lot of money. Um, no, so we did Emerald City Cabaret. So I decided to rename us to Min- Midnight Fables Cabaret because um, what's the second word in it? Fable. Yeah. So I was like, I can follow me... along, guys. Yay. <laughs> Aw, round of applause, please. This is why she's a sugar mama and I just it's, do the funny stuff. It's great. So Midnight Fables, um, I was literally thinking of this uh, at, at midnight. Reading. This origin story. On a full story. moon. I yes. can't stand you. <laughs> I can't. I love when it. You're I love how it came together. Yeah. When, I mean, like, how did you think of bourbon and bullshit? Like, think about that. Because I just wanted to drink and bullshit with my friends. Oh, that's so simple. Yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm gonna come to you you create the fucking names uh, so you know i was really going deep okay, okay. so it was midnight fables cabaret we came up with that um reintroduced ourselves and rebranded it in 2020 that's awesome that's awesome yeah. i really like that and so when you for anyone who's not kept up with her on socials which are missing out uh you should definitely follow them um you do almost thematic shows, but I, I've always wondered because I've seen you do Star Wars theme burlesque. Mm-hmm. Which, if you ever saw a Sexy Wookie, it's not me. I promise you. Completely Even though I've asked him multiple times, Patreon uh, will really help me move that forward. Um, but <laughs> she really has asked me. That's not even a joke. I'm like, I will make you pasties, and they will be fabulous. That's, that's not even a fucking joke for anyone Please. listening. She has asked me on more than one occasion. So do you? I've said I'm like, do you want to be Bane? Let me be. Let me make you Bane. Oh my god, it was. This is real. We're not with bonus stuff for Patreons. Um, but yes. so you thematically go with this. And I know Bump of the Night makes sense because of Halloween. Mm-hmm. What's what 
drives that? Like, what are, do you sit around and just like evil scientist it in a corner somewhere? Just, ha ha ha. I just, like, oh, Eureka. of course, of course. Like, it's in my little like witch's shack in the back of my house. And we just, you know, gather together. Come, my pretties. We must go I around and figure you, this out. I thought that's where you guys kept the tarps and the tools. Is that where you work? Oh, honey. No. <laughs> Oh, honey to me. <laughs> the most Southern. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so no, so I have two partners, mm. um, Sean Holloway and Miss Foxy DeVille. And we get together um, once a year and we just formulate, mm. you know, potion make. Okay. Um, what our next year is going to be. Now, for those that don't know, I it's not just Midnight Fables Cabaret. It's also called the Big Bang Boom Collective. It's three companies together. Joined forces back in 2020 after, you know, a thing called COVID-19 happened and it fucked everything. Um, we decided to join forces because being alone in this industry and the, what we were wanting to do um, was hard. So we decided to join forces. So Foxy's Den... Mm. is Mama Fox, Miss Foxy's DeVille. It's cabaret style, very like black box, very interactive. And then Big Bang Boom Cabaret is the high caliber cabaret burlesque in Orlando for 10 years running. Okay. Um, very themey. So Midnight Fables is more nerd less driven. Okay, okay. So we do like for next year, we're doing Tim Burton. We're doing Disney rides or we called them Ride Me, Disney attractions. Um, or for those that are listening that are a part of the mouse, Disney. Disney. Oh, okay. my God. Disney. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a great show that we love putting on. Um, I do love the spook. Surprise, surprise. So this year we're doing Bump in the Night. Um, you guys can't see this. This woman showed up in all black with a pumpkin barrette. <laughs> by robbie vamps and i love you so much i don't know who that is but they did great work thank you um so yes the boot the the bump of the night and the spook and the fucking all the goth this is, she, she embodies mean, it i really wish you were there to record the cackling that came out of me when i found out that not only did we have october with a friday the 13th in mm -hmm. it but also a full moon mm -hmm. that is perfect so yes, I'm a very happy girl. <laughs> Guys, I might have lost her there for a second. She she just <laughs> she just started drooling a little bit. I don't um so you have a troop. Yes. Um but so that's actually a really interesting. So it's kind of like an umbrella for everyone mm -hmm. else. So you guys kind of have your own things and every once in a while you might cross streams or cross like themes. Cross streams. Cross um, I meant like because you're flowing you're as rivers, such a not bro. anything. No, I meant like like flows of direction. You know what? That sounds worse. Um <laughs> Okay, we that was take, awkward. Take two. Take two. Listen, I'm not editing this out. Uh, <laughs> so every once in a while, do you guys end up like crossing ideas and thinking about the same thing and working together? Or is yes. it just like operating independently? No, we, we always do. Um, we collab together. I mean, that's why we've created the collective. Okay. Because uh, Big Bing Boom and Magnet Fables, like we do very themey shows. Um, high caliber means high concept. Okay. So a lot of their shows, like we're doing um, a phobia show in October next year. Really? Yes. So we did this in the past and every single performer has to portray a phobia. That's awesome. So either a person that has this phobia or the phobia itself. That's awesome. Yes. That's creepy and cool and awesome. I love that. It makes you think. I fucking love that because I already know which one I would do and that's terrible. <gasps> it's a phobia of holes, like dark, deep holes. Yeah, That shit's always been trippy to me. But you got to think about it. Like it's burlesque. So mm -hmm. we make it into a farce. Okay. Yeah, so we, yeah. we make fun of it. Um, I remember one year and I, I don't remember the phobia's name. It's super long. Um, Which most of them are. Yeah. It's just like it's blah, 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 phobia. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, it was the fear of um, being in the dark. So I had the entire audience, be, it was just bright as bright as it possibly can be in that, um, the, in the venue, the venue and, um, RAP and I had the lights turn all out and then I had all of my staff and crew turn on flashlights and I performed by flashlight because I needed the light to continue. And then at the end of it, I had all the flashlights start to click off one by one mm. within a minute of my ending. So I end in pure darkness. That's bananas. See? That's you, good. You think about it. You High right. concept. It's I love great. that. How long does it take typically to come up with that concept? Long time. <laughs> I really wish I can give you a time. I've had It students, depends on the ideas, obviously. Yeah. I have students. They ask me that all the time. It can be anywhere between a day that I'm like, oh, this is a great concept. This is wonderful. I want to portray this at the like end of the month, whatever. Um, or it could take years. Damn. Years. 
So well, that's right. That's really cool. That's actually mm-hmm. really, really unique. Listen, we're going to get back. We're going to take a little quick water break. Mm-hmm. Guys, for anyone listening, I know that you guys have been drinking with us. We're, we're running low on our drinks. And honestly, we have to keep drinking, especially if we're going to talk about fears and stuff. Stay tuned for the next half of this, but we're not next half. We're going to take a quick water break. Make sure that you hydrate um, and stay safe. We'll be right back, guys. Hey, guys, while you're listening to the show, I know that you guys want to join in a little bit with us and pouring something up. Here at the show, we ask that you guys drink responsibly and do the right thing. Don't drink and drive. Avoid Amazon one-click buying, and I promise you, you do not need to text your ex. But all jokes aside, do the right thing, don't be dumb, and be safe. Thanks, guys. And now, let's get back to the show. Hi right, guys, so welcome back. So hopefully you enjoyed that little break. Make sure that you didn't buy something on Amazon that you would regret because you you know you don't really align with sober use budget when you're drunk. You just think, oh fuck, I'll figure this out. And then you end up with like 4,800 orders of like, I don't know, your favorite chips that you were craving at midnight when you were drunk. But aside from that, one of the things before we get back into the interview with Aurora Fable, which I'm sure you guys are enjoying, is you guys demanded it. There was people picketing outside my house Asking me night and day, when are we going to talk about it? And in a world that was brave enough to bring you cinnamon whiskey, honey whiskey, pecan, something, praline, all these random things, there was a company that was bold enough to bring us candy corn flavored whiskey. Yes, it sounds gross. And I have no gosh darn idea if it is or not. But to give you a little bit of background on it, this is comes from a distillery who's been making great spirits in Clive, Iowa since 2012. Yes, Iowa. I don't fucking know anyone in Iowa that does anything. So I guess this makes sense that they decided candy corn. Let's turn one of the world's least desirable candies into a liquid. <laughs> I'm just giving you guys a hard time. I'm sure everyone has a preference. Candy corn's gross. Grow up. Um, so the distillery is called Derner, D E. H N as in Nancy E R Distillery. There's a company whose sole lives is in the people who work here and products that they make. Now, one of the things that I was severely impressed by this was you would think a distillery is a ton of people. There's a mass ton of people working on this. There are three motherfuckers who work there. This distillery and this product is made by a whole three people in Iowa. Their website is super simple. It is, uh, it says, truly different taste and spirit, born from the best of whiskeys in the USA, carefully mixed and blended in small batches, using only all natural flavoring, which was something that I was happy about. When you think about Fireball Whiskey, which all the additives and all this extra stuff, all these flavor whiskeys, I never try, trust them. You look online, you find out these horror stories about these whiskeys made with like, oh, the same, what is it, that take that random thing I saw online is like the Fireball is made with the same things of like, uh, what is it? It is... Um, Radiator fluid. Uh, this is made all natural flavoring with real cane sugar. They take pride in everything they do. There's three people. Honestly, I want to buy more just to support them, even though I haven't tried it. So we're going to come back, continue interviewing Aurora Fable, our patron, uh, like our you know, sugar mama, and make sure that she's going to give us a little bit more if anyone has interested questions or um, curiosities about burlesque and everything all things midnight fables you could always hit us up on the instagram and she's one of the people that follow us so make sure you follow her and i'm sure she'll be happy to answer those questions but we're going to go ahead and bring her back and we're going to try this together aurora Mm -hmm. welcome back i'm hopeful hopefully you're looking forward to this as much as i am i know that it's not black or gothic but before we try this any thoughts any thoughts preconceived thoughts going into this candy corn whiskey there's a lot of thoughts there's yeah. there's a lot because um, I'm not a candy corn fan. I prefer uh, the candy pumpkins. Do they taste different? Yes, they do. Oh. Even though people might fight me on that, they definitely taste different. Okay, okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not one for uh, someone that is love of Halloween. Yeah. Uh, candy corn is always there, mm. but um, I use it as a decoration and then I throw it away because. It's Why? How, it's how I feel about good and plenty. I don't use this decoration. I just throw them away. You don't like good and plenty? Only only people who don't like happiness like good and plenty. Just, I mean, do you like Mike and Ike's? Yes. 
Good and Plenty and Mike and Ike's are like the same thing. No, they are not. Good and Plenty is licorice. <laughs> okay, okay. Pretty All right, <laughs> everyone that is listening to this podcast, we have werewolves versus vampires and now Good and Plenty oh, versus Mike and Ike's. This is going to be like five hours worth of content. Listen, <laughs> so but so you're saying you're concerned about the flavor because you don't necessarily like it. Yes. Okay. But I'm excited because if it is a whiskey that, especially with the description you have, mm. I'm going to enjoy it regardless. We're going in with positivity, okay? We're going to manifest that this is going to be amazing. And I'm, and I'm going to sit here and be completely objective, <laughs> objective <laughs> and just tell you if it sucks or not. So it's going to be great. So All cheers. Right, cheers. Let's try this candy corn whiskey oh, from good. Iowa. Just smelling it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Guys, that's fucking delicious. Guys, that's this is a fucking problem. I, why do I like it? Guys, this is why a fucking problem. I, Okay, when I just breathed out, like that's all I can taste is I just had a handful of candy. Uh, okay, uh, uh, we we got to break this down. So okay, so candy corn whiskey is thirty five percent alcohol by volume. Um, it cites itself as going to give you um, more than you'll pick up sweetness from the real cane sugar. All the scents that will come with wonderful memories of candy corn. It is supposed to taste a little bit like vanilla, nutmeg, almond, oak, allspice, and lavender. These motherfuckers aren't lying. I can taste the lavender, and I am a huge lavender fan. This 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 is not bad, and I'm mad about this. I am so furious because I was ready to be mad at this whiskey. I want I want this. I mean, it's it's sweeter, obviously, so you can't necessarily chug ton of it. But this was no. a nice little sip, and oh, I this well, is you a ha- you have it in this beautiful little like what is it called a snifter. Yeah, yeah. Sifter, Glen, Glen Sir- I don't know. I'm not bougie like that. I mean, look like a little whiskey glass, a Glen Glen Claring glass, Glen Claring. Like this is, I mean, it's a beautiful glass and it's, it's opening it up the bouquet. Mm. This is lovely. They're not lying. The smell, it smells just like fucking candy corn, but the good, because wow. my problem with candy corn has always been that it smells great, but in, 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 in theory, it's great. In practice, it's awful. <laughs> Too much candy corn is fucking makes you sick to your stomach. It's like almost any candy, Swedish fish, whatever. Yeah. In theory, it smells great. This smells fantastic and it tastes really fucking good. This is great. This is this is really good. And I I wanted to hate this and I don't. I went into this ready to shit all over this and think I wasted money on this bottle. Oh my god. Like I want to open it up. I want to I want to Yes, this is definitely something that I would want to sip. I don't know what drink you would what cocktail you would possibly make with this. You don't even This is guys great. to give you even more context. I'm just sipping on this. This is room temp. This isn't chilled. I didn't throw it in a freezer. I didn't do nothing to this bad boy. Oh my God, this is pissing me off. Listen, if you do, I'm about to fucking, I'm shame. I'm plugging them. Listen, um, info at drinkcandycorn.com. Hit them up. Their website is drinkcandycorn.com. I don't, I don't want money from them, but I feel like everyone should look into this bottle. Let me ask you this. With candy corn, because like anything that is flavored... Either they actually have it distilled, and now I'm 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 a novice when it comes to something like that. Like I do my, like my whiskeys. I have specific whiskeys I yeah. like, right? But mm. flavored whiskey, every time I hear it, they're usually either taking like a tea bag or they're taking coffee. They're taking the actual flavor and distilling it with it. This tastes like they blended all of these flavors and not just throw a barrel full of candy corn in this. Yeah, I'm, I. It, this is great. So here, that's the thing. When it says all flavors are 100 percent natural. This uh, has asterisks because everything fucking has yeah, asterisks. Yeah. Uh, there are no allergens or nuts in candy corn whiskey, which is great. Cool. I'm not gonna have to get my happy pen. Um, I'm I'm assuming through trial and error they figured out how to replicate this taste mm-hmm. flavor profile. And when it talks about vanilla, I hear about vanilla oaky taste in all whiskeys. You hear about natural ways of making vanilla taste. I think with enough mixing and trial and error, you could figure out. Hey, I can make anything taste like anything. I mean, well, there are grapes that taste like ca- cotton candy out there. I'm sure you can fucking do. Yeah, but you got to think of like certain candies, especially this candy. We've all had this candy at like late at night where it's the last candy mm-hmm. and you're eating it and you're like, mm-hmm. this tastes like plastic. And your parent made you give all your good candy to your sibling. Oh, yeah. We're going to unpack some... that later. Yeah, we are. <laughs> you know, it's, it's bringing back horrific memories. Just the, horrific. The fucked up thing is, this is great yeah. and I'm not mad at it. If you guys do end up buying it, I don't care if you say I mentioned it, just fucking buy it. Tell me you bought it. It was like... $45. It came in here three days. Those three people are working really fucking hard. Hook them up. When you talk about support mm-hmm. local, this is fantastic. And the bottle's really cute. 
Yeah, it looks like candy corn. Shouts to our homies in Iowa. They don't know me, but I, I love them already. All right. So Make more good whiskey. Yeah, keep making it. They only have they their website has one bottle of whiskey on it, and it's this. And it's forty five dollars USDA. Okay. So I'm just throwing it out there. If you are listening, candy pumpkins. I don't know if that it's tastes this. different. <laughs> like, <I'm laughs> to me it does. Can someone tell me the favor pro- profile if it is actually different? And then just break my heart if it is. It's the exact same thing. We're not doing that. So we're going to come back. <laughs> so, so we're going to talk a little bit more about Aurora Fable and the Midnight Cabaret and, <laughs> and their um, ill-conceived notions that candy corn and pumpkins taste different. Um, Don't shit on my parade, okay? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. So we talked a little bit how you come up with your concepts, ideas, and they're mm-hmm. heavily nerdy themed. And I know your husband. He's a super nerd. Uh, Kismic, right? That was fucking made... Um, in the stars, the nerdy stars, in a galaxy far, far away because you did that show. Um, so when you choose these themes and you go into all that, do you think about, all right, this is going to be a fun one. Oh, no. So you do you look and say, I have this ensemble of people. Mm-hmm. Who can I, what can I imagine them in? Or what, how's that, do you say, I have Jacob. He would look really fucking good in a Batman outfit and go, the next show is gonna be fucking DC. So I love how we like we're coming back into Batman. I love this. I am Batman. I am the knight. You are the knight. I am the knight. <laughs> uh, Swear to me. Swear to me. Uh, you want to be the first person on the show that said that we're Batman. But go on. Uh, do you look at the, your people and try to assign them roles and think of like what they look good in and then make a show around that or is that not? So uh, sometimes. So with Big Bang Boom Cabaret because like we've had 10 years worth of, of ideas and the beautiful thing about that they never redid a show for almost eight years they've never redid a show and um with Midnight Fables because we're so new we're celebrating our eight years Shit. um in a week so I'm so excited I'm um, so excited I'm so excited I feel like I need to have like leg warmers on um so okay it's whatever I want, to be honest. Is that the benefit of being the boss? It, the yes. sugar mama guess, guess what she wants? I do what I want. Um, so it actually is, it's evolved from let's do something that we know that we have several people in the community that already has a number or that people, like we ask our performers, hey, what do you want to do? Like, are you vibing with something? Like, let's let's do this. For someone who says you're, you're the boss and you do what you want, you seem to be pretty fair. Uh, see, as in you I go am, up to your I'm people. A fair, I'm a fair I'm boss. I'm a fair just I'm God fair. is what you are. <laughs> well, but it, it's 2.2 where it's like there are some times where I will bring back a show because either I have way too many performers, like our Disney attraction ones, where I had way too many performers that were like, hi, I have an idea. I want to do the show and I only have 10 slots. Ah, uh, so, so in fairness, to make sure that everyone gets their time to shine. Absolutely, absolutely. And they're unique ideas, yeah. Yeah, so then, but we have other shows like a sci-fi show or Twilight Zone or um, Phobias or anything like that we actually do. Uh, Florida Man. The fuck did you say to me? Florida There was Man. a Florida Man show? Oh, we've done Florida Man a few times. Oh, God. And I'm it. trying to bring it back because it just keeps, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Florida and Man. it's so good. Florida Man will always keep giving, whether you want to or not. Brock Turner. But it's a beautiful show because it's all Florida based. Mm. And um, I don't know if anybody recalls, there's a meme that um, back a few years ago, a King Cobra got out and a meme started circulating that mm. the King Cobra went to Disney. And went to Universal and traveled around and <laughs> No. So I, I was, didn't see that meme. So I was the Cobra. It was I'm, great. I'm making a face. I am making a, <laughs> I have been friends with you for a very long time yes. and I did not know that you were the Cobra. I, it was so much fun. I came out with little ears. I had a little like satchel from like um, Universal and a little umbrella and it was it was great. Oh god damn it. I was oh, wearing Crocs that's... for a second. Like it's 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 wow. a vibe. Okay, it's a vibe. Uh, it was, Crocs are a vibe still. <laughs> I mean, it's a Florida thing. Uh, we're gonna, when we're you gonna, know, you know. We're going to move. It's great. We're going to move on. So no, so coming back to it, we're coming up with ideas depending on the want and the need. Mm. But it's always based on what do we want to do Okay. and what month... What's happening that month? Okay, okay. So, so keep it topical, but makes sense. It's it's a lot of factors because mm. hello, it's October. Yeah, we're gonna do something spooky. Yeah. We're gonna do something fun. Mm. Um, May we kind of like 
shy away from, but usually it's either Star Wars. Oh, or May the 4th. Yeah. May the 4th. Um, or, you know, the Revenge of the 5th. Yeah. So, or because in Orlando, if you don't know, we live under a rock. Okay. Um, we have what's called the Orlando Fringe Festival. Yep. That takes over half the month of May. Listen, for anyone who's not from Orlando, break it down. Yeah. Fringe so Festival. Fringe Festival. So Fringe Festivals happen internationally. So it's not just in our tiny little borough, but internationally. And it is a culmination of multiple shows, whether it be short films or short films, um, short plays, short musicals, usually between spanning about 20 minutes in length, all the way up to an hour and a half. Mm. Okay. And you have festivals, usually about a week to two weeks in length. Yeah. And there are shows happening every single day. It's oversaturated of content. 10 hours a day. Oh, that's okay? exhausting. And it's amazing. No, it's amazing. Oh, I'm saying for those dancers and those oh, performers. Yeah. Like but that. it's constant. So with a Fringe Festival, you could have hundreds of shows. Some oh. of these, like we've had people from like Tokyo, Japan, who toured coming to the Fringe Festival here in Orlando. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, Edinburgh is another um, uh, French festival that's huge and in Scotland. And then you have other ones in Canada. And there's people that come all over the place. To Orlando. To Orlando. For French. For French. Goddamn. So we have, um, of course, local yeah. um, artists. So we have anything from musicals to comedy shows to full-length plays to shorts to you name it. It's there. Burlesque is also a thing. Like, Courses and Cuties is another Orlando-based show. I heard of they them. do them all the time. Um, Big Bang Boom, we did two actually in the past. Masquerade yeah. of the Red Death. Yeah, um, yeah, based I saw off the book, yeah. and then um, we did one was called Apartment Two C, which was a voyeurism show. Got the fuck up. Yeah, so we had um, it was an apartment that we had. Um, I was pregnant at the time, so I was the landlord, walking around helping people out. It was that great, is awesome. Yeah, so it was. It's a beautiful show. So you were able to put on these shows, and you can have exhibitionists. You can have. Um, comedy shows and we had one year where there was this this man I really wish I could remember a name, name I will post it um, it is a one man show and he is licensed by George Lucas Films to do a one man Star Wars trilogy he does oh it oh my god he what? does every single movie the, fir- the original trilogy in burlesque no, oh, oh no, no, no! How? It's not burlesque. Okay, you, even though that would be amazing. Hi. That's what I was curious. How Let's the fuck do a plug. Do Let's do that. No, he does everything from voices to um, he does the pew pew like he does the, just the characterizations, everything in an hour and fifteen minutes. So you're, what? What I'm really hearing is that all those movies could be wrapped up in an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh, of course they can. Okay, thank you. But it's great for all our nerds listening. It's great. Get over so it. Fringe, of course, in May. Like we can't do much in May yeah. except for one or the other okay and so it dictates okay speaking of your performers Mm -hmm. i got a question yeah so we talked about it a little bit off air so i'm gonna bring it back for anyone who says hey don't have off air conversations that you're not gonna include us in well come over then um uh, listen so when you get performers and i I'm, i'm certain this has happened to you you've gotten a performer that's hey i've never done burlesque but i watch these couple shows i'm typically pretty fucking bashful no it's not me Relax, whoever's listening. It is totally him. It's not me. It's totally him. Um, how's that experience with them? Like, what do you, what do what what goes through your mind? How are you excited? Are you like nervous for them? Like, how do you make them feel more comfortable in that role and do everything they're trying to do? I'm excited for them. So it's a great segue into. I have a um, called the Burlesque Conservatory, and um, my sister in burlesque, Gams Divine, which she's all the way in Alaska now. Love mm. her to death. She came up to Miss Foxy Develop myself and said, "Hey, I have an idea. Let's teach." Let's teach burlesque. So we created the Burlesque Conservatory. It's a 12-week program. Mm. It's a 12-week intensive program. and Intensive. 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 What is is intensive? So you have 10 weeks worth of instruction. 10 weeks of one-hour instruction on a Sunday where you learn everything from burlesque history to stage information to costuming, makeup application, hair application. Do you test them? No, fuck test. <laughs> um, nah. So it, it all brings to, we boil it down to, you have to feel good about yourself. Okay. Inside and out. Everyone is beautiful. Everyone can do ten, what we do. Ten okay? weeks. Ten weeks. And then the last two weeks, we do professional photography. We do a show and tell where it's a huge party with all of the students. 
And then it comes to a culmination. It goes to a graduation show. Okay. Where if you want to, you can take it off in front of your friends, in front of your family, so bold, your coworkers. And it is so much fun because doing the conservatory, we're six seasons in. Yeah. And we've seen people come in where they're from a torrid past where they just feel that they've been beaten down. They Mm. don't feel comfortable in their own skin and they want to learn how to express themselves. And that's the beauty of burlesque. You are being vulnerable in front of a massive crowd. That's, that's, that could be really powerful. That's, that's powerful for them, especially I'm assuming sometimes that there might be even moments where they did that show. Have you had people say, okay, I'm done. I I want to get that off my chest. I did it. It was almost therapeutic and just, I never, it was, Beautiful. I loved everything about it, but I got what I needed out of this. Actually, about 90% of our students are like that. That seems almost, like I said, therapeutic, not to repeat mm-hmm. myself, but it seems to that point where you get that out, you get that creativity, or you get to express yourself, and once you're done, you could be mm-hmm. like, I'm done, I'm out. You, I mean, a lot of our students, they look back and say, I did that. Mm. I claimed myself, my body, and I, I reclaimed my power. That's fantastic, man. It's amazing. So as a teacher, as a mom, what is it the dead mother? Or what, how was, was it you call yourself? So I'm a burly mom. Oh my God. So a burly mom is it. So look at this. When you I say like, burly mom, it makes it sound like you wear a fur coat and you just want to I mean, like it's, it's called the drama coat. <laughs> I'm ready for my close up. Oh my God. No. So it's the burly mom. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. Mm. So I'm a, a professor. I teach burlesque with the burlesque conservatory with a huge array of professors from all local boroughs and then i'm a burly mom Mm. and what that means is basically a burlesque performer who's been in the game for a bit that has found somebody in either starting out in burlesque or wanting or coming up to me and saying hi i want to do this i've been to several shows gee and i want to do this so i once I get the little, you know, I get the jellies. Okay, let's, let's, let's vibe with her. I get the little jellies. And I'm like, I vibe with you. I think I can help you continue on. So that's how a burlesque mom talks about. Okay. Have you ever... All right, guys. So that's going to wrap up part one of episode three. Stay tuned. In the next week, you will get part two of the Aurora Fable interview and get a little bit more insight on what goes bump in the night and what scares us. There's also going to be a special episode dropping for spooky season. It's going to be ghost stories and some more Halloween themed fun. Stay tuned, guys. Don't forget to stay safe. Don't drink and drive. Leave a five star review. Don't text your ex and avoid Amazon one click buy. If you're enjoying what we're doing, make sure that you like, subscribe, follow us on socials, and show some love. Share with a friend. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Burn, Termite, and Pest Control. I first met Joe Burn on Full Frontal Nerdy Show and decided to give his company a try. They have been the best pest service I've ever had. From flexible scheduling, attention to detail, fair pricing, and everything you love about a small business, I highly recommend Joe Byrne and Byrne Termite and Pest Control. It's a family-owned and operated business with over 30 years of experience in termite and pest. You can reach Burn Termite and Pest Control at 321-297-7985. Once again, 321-297-7985. And let them know Bourbon and Bullshit sent you. Thanks, guys. See you next time.